New integrations, new exciting metrics on Polygon as the market remains shaky. Welcome back everyone to another Polygon Matic video. If you do enjoy staying up to date with everything Polygon and crypto related, make sure that you are subscribed so you're never missing out. Consider following me on Twitter where I post daily information around the Polygon ecosystem at NARB Trading. Gently tap on that like button and let's get right into it. So real quickly, wanted to point out something that we went over a few days ago and that was the Polygon POS bridge seeing an increase in activity. Now, taking a look at DAP Radar, the bridge is now the third most used DAP on Ethereum over the last 30 days. So it has now officially passed Uniswap v3 in users for the past month. Very cool to see the Polygon bridge as one of the top DAPs on Ethereum and only behind Uniswap v2 and OpenSea. OpenSea is, of course, getting a lot of attention in usage right now. NFTs seem to be bringing a lot of people into the world of crypto, but it is great to see a Polygon DAP now in the top three. Moving on on now, we have a little sneak peek from Rarible. Rarible is of course an NFT marketplace and check this out folks, Rarible is working on a Polygon integration. So I remember maybe a few months back seeing an article that Rarible wanted to become multi-chain and allow for bridging with a few different chains. So I would imagine this will be coming fairly quickly and you will be able to soon trade Polygon NFTs on their marketplace. So awesome to see another Polygon integration, really no surprise here, I think most projects or dApps are at least considering integrating Polygon, and of course, the more the merrier. Next up now, we have another exciting bridge integration. DBridge now supports Polygon along with a few other chains. So as you can probably guess, this is a cross-chain bridge, so you can move your assets between Ethereum and BSC, Polygon to BSC, Polygon to Arbitrum, and so on. I love to see these types of things. The more bridges we have available, the more opportunities users have to easily move their funds from one chain to another, and it's just simply great to have many different options. Of course, there are a lot of different bridges out there, whether it be L2 to L2 bridges or Ethereum to Polygon like Umbria Network, but these bridges are bringing more opportunities to easily access these different chains, which is very important. So another quick shout out there, I'll leave the link to this down below if you'd like to check them out. But let's move on now to the final piece that I want to cover before we take a look at the charts, which is just one point that I wanted to read to you guys from the latest Our Network Analysis on Polygon. So check this out. Weekly net flows averaged over 93 million last month over the POS bridge. More impressively, there are 38 times the number of depositors as withdrawers. Finally, network revenues have recovered back to 92k daily after the implementation of EIP 1559 stabilized adjustments were made. So users are depositing into Polygon 38 times more than users are withdrawing. I would say that that is a good sign. That is basically telling us that when users are entering Polygon, they tend to stick around. Now, now, obviously, I understand that you can bridge out using something else as well, but regardless, 38x is certainly some good retention in my opinion. So just wanted to quickly shout that out to you guys as well, and those were the updates that I wanted to cover for today. So let's now move on and take a look at the charts. So the crypto market is once again falling. Matic is down 7% on $1.62. Here on the Matic weekly chart, it does look like we'll be seeing another test at that $1.50 area of support. And folks, as I'm sure most of you are aware, the Russia-Ukraine situation is heating up, inflation is at 40 year highs, and now we have this craziness happening in Canada. So it's really no surprise that the market is a bit shaky right now. The stock market is of course weak as well. This is the S&P 500 and as you can see, the prices are dropping. And for the S&P 500, by the way, this is a decently significant fall because for the past two years now, it's basically just been up only. But moving back over to Matic, we do still have a decent amount of support below us. Also this 50 week moving average creeping up as well and Matic has not been below this moving average this whole move up. Then of course we have the Bitcoin chart. This is again from the weekly time frame, and BTC also has some support below it at this downward trend line. But as we've been discussing folks, in my opinion, technical analysis is not going to play a huge factor during times like these. This action you're seeing across all markets right now is very much sentiment and fear based. And until all of this sort of calms down, which may take some time because there's so much going on right now, but until then it's really hard to say where things are going to go in the short term. Obviously long term, nothing has changed, this isn't going to have a negative impact on prices forever, but for now, that is what we are looking at. My plan is to simply be patient, add more to my positions as time goes on, and really just watch how this all plays out. But that, folks, is going to be it for today's video. I do thank you all very much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed so you're never missing out. Leave a like, it really helps me out. I will see you all next time.